bit of argument, isn't it? Um, there was a little bit there. Um, she was telling her mother um, why it was a genuine crop circle, why it had been created by some sort of paranormal force. And we were going through BLT science with it, which was just very interested. And, you know, mum wasn't particularly interested, but once her daughter had told her why, in her eyes, it was genuine, mum got to experience it. Um, mum was quite happy to lie down in that crop circle. And mum was quite happy to soak up the atmosphere. I had just begun to enter into scepticism. And I think it should be on your list of 100 things to do before you die, to go on a ghost hunt and just look as a sceptic at the methods that paranormal investigators use. Because for my personal journey into scepticism, it was there were some moments of enlightenment along the way when people were claiming things such as ghosts were interfering with uh, video cameras. Never mind that the video camera was on night shot and it was being focused on a blank wall. In my life since I was a child, um, I mentioned the UFO that I saw as a child. I see ghosts when I was a child as well. Um, mm. I seen a ghost of a man walking upstairs um, in a house I used to live with, um, seeing things standing by my bed. Um, I've experienced nipping time, which is actually quite scary. Um, it was nothing exotic, I should add. It was nowhere exotic, but at the same time, I wonder whether I get me to redirect my mask as it's looking across my face. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, I joined a very, very, very bad paranormal group in Gloucestershire where some people would be off their heads on drugs when they were going on investigations. Not me, I should, I should add. Um, and I, I did notice that the people who were a bit more sensibly minded, they sort of, probably with a bit of guidance from me, they did take a step back. And there are about four people there who started to question their belief because of things that we saw in investigations and were able to rationalise it. But there are some people, for whatever reason, whether they desperately want to believe, um, or they just cannot let go, some of them, that they will not change their minds. And I've seen instances of people who've been recently bereaved. It's very, very sad. Yeah, I actually saw your talk where you admitted to making certain circles. I like all those people jumping up and down <laughs> in the channel saying, I know it is, I know it is. Um, yeah, I... It's a bit of a disappointment when the mystery goes. I also sort of think, who... Who made that? I look at it and I think, can I recognise the style of the person who's made it? Yeah, Stonehenge 2001, well, the team who made it never admitted it. Openly, there were hints dropped. Um, and they will interpret anything as paranormal and it can be the slightest thing and there's no chance of getting them to change their mind. And it acts as a crutch. And I, I used to be very much that the idea that people like that should be protected from it but I think maybe I'm more in line with you now Chris um, which is fine I've no problem with that because obviously I'm aware how the circles get there I like a bit of mystery I like I know some people think it was a bit of an abomination the Jill Bolton one um with the with it, was it that I think if it's acting as a crutch for somebody then maybe it's not a horrendously bad thing after all um, I, I don't know who made that and I'm quite I like that. I like to still have a little bit of mystery. I think if we knew everything about life, things would be a little bit more... There's, there's no... I actually tried to build a profile of the average paranormal investigator based on sort of socio-economic background and a few other things. I... Knowing people who've been on it, I can see the points they've been trying to make about it. And at the same time, again, I know how... Most crop circles probably get there. And I think it's important that that information should be in the public domain. And I got in touch with over 200 groups and there were only a handful that would agree to take part. And they were the groups that I would consider to be more rationally minded. So it, I think it's very tough to actually give a profile of what the average investigator is like. Uh, I can pick up a copy of the field guide. I can pick up a copy of Round in Circles. And you can learn things from it.
you can take hints from it. You know, it's a it's a way forward, and I, you know I've read both of those books, and I've read other books as well from the other side of the fence. I've read a lot of Colin Andrews, Pat Delgado stuff, um, Andy Thomas even, um, and your good friend Mr. Glickman as well. Somebody ended up getting so scared of what was happening after a medium had come in and told the owners of this business that you've got a ghost of a, of a man here. I can't remember the exact details. That they actually left their job over it and I'm aware of a case in Bristol as well where somebody had photographs of orbs and they were desperate to move because of it. It absolutely terrified them. They even appeared on television. I think it was on the big questions um, in regard to the case. And people can be profoundly affected by it and the last thing that they need very often is a team of paranormal investigators going into the house and telling them that Auntie Nora is the cause of the kettle switching itself off. And I think, yeah, you know, I think it's important that the other side of view is put across and that we don't deny how they get there. And I think it's very much down to the individual what they take from the experience of this show. Some people will watch this and they'll think, no, that's a complete load of rubbish, he's a liar. You work very much fine, Matthew, and all your guests are, are fakes, are all frauds. That's fine. If people want to believe that, then I've no issue with that. Well, the Spider Man, so. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit about your background? How did you come to be involved in circle making? How did I become involved, involved in circle making? making? Firstly, can I just apologise for sounding like a paedophile on Jeremy Kyle? <laughs> for that type, with the voice. Um, well, you can't normally allow people to apologise for being a paedophile, but uh, in your case, all right, then we will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not a paedophile, but I just watched Jeremy Kyle too much, and I'm very aware that I probably sound like one. Um, I, I was, how did I become involved in circle making? Um, I was very interested in thought circles as a child. Um, all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Um, I saw what some people would interpret to be a UFO when I was a child. Um, and then sort of mid-1980s, as I was growing up, I picked up on the whole sort of crop circle thing. Um, it was one of my lifelong ambitions to see a crop circle. Um, and Doug and Dave confessed um, in 91. I went out with a couple of friends uh, the following year. And um, we made two very poor crop circles um, in the close to where I lived. As far as I know, they were never discovered. And a couple of years back, uh, a crop circle appeared at Williston. And it was close to where I was working at the time. And so I decided that a bit of detective work and try and find out who made it. And thanks to the miracle of Facebook, I was able to track down uh, two of your past guests, actually. All right. Um, Relic Maker. Oh, yes. And a certain other person, Andy yes. Russell. Um, they're absolutely fantastic people. And they took me under their wing, really. And you're just about to have the police come into the door now as we speak. Right. Okay. Well, hopefully not. No, I'm really joking. Well, some people have said in in the uh, channel that they don't like the the voice that is pissing them off that it's it's low. But I know that it does kind of anonymise it. Uh, do you want to risk uh, a high pitch voice? You know, do the the chipmunk voice instead. Um, I'm quite happy to chipmunk. I'm quite happy to be very copy of whatever you like. We'll Right. So did you uh, go out and uh, sort of make any elaborate circles straight away, or was it simple stuff? Uh, depends what you call elaborate, really. They're yeah, okay. The first one I made with them was in all of um, I don't want to go into specifics. I'm not going to admit to making anything in particular. Um, I have my own reasons for that, which I really don't want to go into. Um, but yeah, they took me on board, they took me under their wing. And they taught me some good things. Oh, that's a very, very good question. Um, well, um, what what sort of uh, scale were they then? You know, we can probably say that without 
specifically describing a specific circle, couldn't we? Um, I've noticed that a lot of tape measures tend to come in lengths of 30 metres. Right. <laughs> You're going to be that specific. That's very specific. Goodness, that's really good going. Wiltshire. They are in Wiltshire? They are in Wiltshire, yes. All oh, right, good. That's good then. Yeah, I've made, made, made them in Olsey Brake and in Barley and in Wheat. Right. So, again, I don't want to go into specifics too much. Okay. 